okay so today's topic is system programs till now we have studied that uh, what is an operating system so what is an operating system it is a, an, a resource allocator it is a control program right and then we study about uh, what different type of architecture of operating system now today's turn is system program so what is a system program uh, in uh, previous class when we are studying about uh, different type of uh, architecture of operating system then we have seen that we want to make the kernel th that is the micro kernel as small as possible means only essential things we want to put into the micro kernel and rest of the things that are not essential can be provided through the means of a system program now what are different type of system programs uh, how we can um, manage all those non essential services through system programs let's see what is a system program system program provide operating system functionality through separate application through separate application which are not part of the kernel or command interpreters which are not part of the kernel or command interpreters they are also known as system utilities or system applications so you can simply think of um, these system programs as office superintendent of your faculty means they are not part of the coordinators sir uh, uh, functionalities but they can solve your problems that are not essential so these system programs can solve directly your problems without the need of a kernel or command interpreters so system programs provide operating system functionality through separate applications through separate applications which are not part of the kernel or command interpreters they are known as system utilities or system applications then uh, we can see what are the different type of uh, categories of system application first one is programming language support first one is programming language support in which what are the different type of system applications like compilers linkers debuggers assemblers interpreters for common languages etc then we have program loading and execution loaders dynamic loaders etc communications purpose for system applications we have programs for providing connectivity between processes and users including web browsers remote logins between uh, processes and users including web browsers remote logins file transfers and remote command execution so till now what categories we have seen programming language support program loading and execution communication as you can see there are multiple uh, activity uh, needs by the user applications that need the services of operating system and you can see these services previously provided by the kernel only but now we have designed a separate system application programs to provide these services like compilers linkers debugger assembler loaders dynamic loaders program that provide connectivity between processes and users web browsers remote logins file transfer remote command execution these all are comes under the uh, system applications and what are other categories next one is file management file management is also and uh, is now taken care by the system programs to create delete copy rename print list and generally manipulate file direction these services provided by the system applications now status information utilities to check on the date time number of pro users process running data logging etc system registries are used to store and recall configuration information for particular applications so file management status information and file modification like text editors and other tools which can change file content so these are the some more categories of system applications and the last one like background processes services system demos are commonly started when the system is booted here you can think of a system demo as a very large process which is which runs in the background means you, you are not aware that uh, something is happening in background but still uh, something is going on and done by someone someone or something so these are the called demos system demos like uh, it is a, like a big process 
which is running in the background and doing the essential things like uh, as you can see that uh, this powerpoint presentation you are seeing right now but this must has been developed previously only then we can use it right now so who has designed this powerpoint presentation someone who is in the background you are not aware who has designed this uh, powerpoint presentation for you that may be a big process behind that is who are not aware that who is who has written this powerpoint presentation in front i am teaching you this subject right now but who has uh, developed this powerpoint presentation you are not aware because this application presentation has been developed in the background that you are not aware that who has uh, designed and updated this powerpoint presentation so you can think of this as a background service process so system demos are commonly started when the system is booted whenever you boot a system these uh, demo is started working in the background and uh, run for as long as the system is running handling necessary services examples include network demos print servers process schedulers and system error monitoring services just like your electricity system that you on your power switch and you get the electricity but how you are getting the electricity it is done in the background you are not aware that who is uh, producing this electricity and from which resource this electricity is generating through coal burning or through uh, water or through air there may be multiple ways that electricity can be generated but it is done in the background you are not aware that who is and how it is generated from which resource you are getting the electricity so this can be think of as a background service that is running in the background so this is simple introduction of a system application so uh, we need to study this because uh, we need to take in care that all there are multiple number of services needed by the user applications to interact with the hardware but all these services are not essential so we need to secure the kernel the micro kernel so we have uh, designed micro kernel in such way that only essential activities can be handled by the micro kernel and rest of the things can be uh, managed through the system programs so uh, this is the normal introduction of this uh, system applications and programs there is some exercises like what is the purpose of system programs discuss the categories of system programs uh, this is not very important topic of your operating system system programs but uh, you must be aware of what type of what is a system programs and what are the categories of system programs uh, so today we have completed your half unit of first uh, in which uh, basically this was the introduction section of the operating system that what is an operating system what are different um, the architecture of uh, operating system and what are the functionality provided by operating system what are the services provided by the operating system and how micro kernel making it secure by taking solving only essential problems and uh, non essential things can be taken care by the system program so this is a general introduction of the operating system that today we have covered now the real topic i started from today that is the process management so the next topic in the queue is process management as we have seen that uh, multiple functionality provided by the operating system that are what uh, process management memory management input output devices management peripheral devices management these are the functionalities provided by the operating system to give a environment in which a user can perform its task very easily so today introduction section of the operating system has been completed and all the context you have got about the operating system so to, we will move on the next topic that is the process management so let's see what is a process let's see uh, what is the process and how operating system manages the processes and what is the difference between process and a program uh, what are the essential ingredients of a process and uh, how a process is managed in the memory and what are the ingredients of a process control block so uh, we are starting the main course of your operating system subject a starter has been finished that is the introduction of your operating system 
Now, the interesting thing is started from here now onwards, in which we will have some interesting topic like processes, memory management, in which a lot of numerical we will discuss. And then you will find this operating system topic are much interesting because the starting of introduction is was very the theoretical one in which we are studying just the uh, we are uh, learning about what uh, the previous done of the operating system different architecture functionality services and th that was a little boring but from today we will discuss some numerical problems some interesting things about the processes memory and input output file management etc so let's start the process management in which firstly we will discuss what is a process so what is a process concept a process is a program in execution what do you think of a process as process is a program in execution that is it is a unit of work within the system program is a passive entity whereas process is an active entity now how to distinguish what is a program and what is a process suppose you have written a program that wants to uh, add two integer values provided by the user now you have written a c program in which uh, you have taken some variables you have printed user that please enter two numbers you want to add then uh, you have some scanner function which it takes the input from the user then uh, you have uh, your logic section in which you added the sum equal to suppose to number num1 and num2 taken by the user num1 plus num2 then you printed the output taken from uh, executed through sum equal to a plus b so you printed the sum so this is the program you have written but the program you have written on a computer system that is on compiler or on a your a4 sheet uh, this program is a passive entity it means this program cannot do anything until or unless you execute this program right without execution this program is nothing but a passive entity it means this program have instructions that can be solved that can be taken care by the hardware but until or unless you execute this program nothing will happen so that is why program is called a passive entity whereas once a program you are executing then it will think of it as a process now process is an active active entity because it is running and solving and executing all the instructions all the instructions given by the computer programmer in that program so what do you think uh, whenever someone asks you what is the process you have to tell a process is a program in execution that is program is a passive entity and process is an active entity means once you run a program it comes into the process state understand so what are the resources needed by the process to accomplish its task resources needs by the process like cpu memory input output files initialization data these are the resources needed by the process uh, just think of uh, uh, like uh, you a persons you are uh, needs you need some resources to solve some particular problem so what are the resources needed by your process these resources are the cpu central processing unit memory input output files initialization data these are the resources a process need to accomplish its task and what are the ingredients of a process that a process required what are the ingredients required by the process these are the program counter a stack and a data section you can think of a stack as a memory space uh, required by the process to store some essential information about the data section means what what are the local and uh, global variables of a program that is required and what are the functions you are using that particular information will be stored in the stack the stack is a memory space you can think of it and uh, there is a, another concept about a memory in the computer is heap uh, what is the difference between stack and heap difference between stack and heap difference between stack and heap 
what is the difference between stack and heap in context with the computer memory in context with the computer memory in in context with the computer memory uh sorry and there was an interrupt so i was asking what is the difference between stack and heap so heap you can think of a memory space that is uh, have an analogy of your store room of your house just yeah just like your store room you have all the essential space required of your needs into the store room but in your study table you put only essential books like uh, in which it present uh, semester what are the books required you put on your study table but all the other books you have put into the your store room so heap is a bigger memory space and uh, your study table is a smaller memory space that you use frequently means those books that you refer frequently you put on your study table and those book that you don't refer frequently are put into where in your store room so a stack you can think of a frequently used memory space just like your study table and heap you can think of a bigger memory space and where that you refer less frequently just like your store room so what is the process concept a process is a program in execution it is a unit of work within the system it is a unit of work within the system program is a passive entity whereas process is an active entity process needs resources to accomplish its task cpu memory uh, cpu memory input output uh, and files initialization data and what are the process includes a program counter a stack and a data section and data section so what are the process states how a process uh, changes states from one state to another state let's see once a new process comes into the picture or wants to execute some needs the resources of the hardware then a new process comes and then it will go to the ready state in ready state all the processes that needs the services of the hardware comes into the ready state now once a new, from new state to ready state you comes then a new process is admitted to the ready queue in a ready state there is a ready queue a new process admitted to the ready queue of the ready process then if all uh, there is a scheduler dispatch which pick the processes into the ready queue from the ready state based upon some scheduling criteria and give the services of the hardware then we can say that the process is in running state now from running state to ready state a process can go back whenever an interrupt has occurred whenever an interrupt is there suppose uh, uh, you close the process means you don't want to execute <clears throat> sorry you don't want to execute it. that process at the moment you close that process then there is an interrupt as occur or any other interrupt comes then or suppose a high priority comes into the picture then the, your process is interrupted and it is returned to the ready queue now next state is waiting state when a process comes into the waiting state when a process needs input output or any event wait suppose that process need input from some other process then it has to wait till that process give that input to that particular running process till then we are having a waiting queue and that running process shifted to the waiting queue until input or input output or event wait has been completed so till now what are the states we have seen we have new state the new state process is admitted to the ready state in ready state we have a ready queue in which multiple uh, running processes are there in which multiple processes are there that wants to, to go into the running state then there is a scheduler dispatch which uh, based upon some scheduling criteria pick up 
the processes from the ready state and send it to the running state. Then there is a feedback system also. That means the process can get back to the ready queue uh, whenever an interrupt occurs. And there is an another state of waiting state in which wherever uh, input output or event wait has occurred, then the process can wait into the waiting queue till uh, input output or event completion has occurred. Now in the end, there is a terminated state, means the process exited and by completing all the activity through the hardware. So these are the five service, five states of a process, new state, ready state, running state, waiting state, and terminated state. This diagram is very important for you because each and every examination of operating system, uh, this process state diagram has been asked from, uh, uh, this diagram has been asked in each and every examination. So you yeah. have to uh, understand this uh, program, this diagram and you don't need to mark this because it is very easy when whenever a new process comes it will be a must be a new state then it will go into the ready state then from ready state we go to the running state then running to ready there is a backward also whenever an interrupt occur and there is a waiting queue whenever input output or event wait occur then the process uh, can go from running state to waiting state and once the activity completed in the running state, then the process is exited and go into the terminated state. So let's see. Uh, as the process execute, it changes its states. First one is new. That is the process is being created. Running instructions are being executed. Waiting, the process is waiting for some event to occur. Ready, the process is waiting to be assigned to a process. And the last terminated, the process has finished execution. So what are the process states? First one is new, the process is being created, running, instructions are being executed, waiting, the process is waiting for some event to occur, ready, the process is waiting to be assigned to a process, terminated, the process has finished execution. Now, the soul of the process is process control block. Uh, what are the ingredients of a process control block? M means uh, each and every process manage a process control block in which all the essential information required by for a process to execute are stored into the process control block. So what are the ingredients of a process control block? Information associated with each process. First one is process is set. Second one is program counter. CPU registers, uh, these are the information required and there is also CPU scheduling information, memory management information, accounting information, input output status information. These are the information required by each processes like process state, program counter, CPU registers, CPU scheduling information, memory management information, input output status information, these uh, are the required ingredients of a process to manage its state like uh, uh, in previously where this program is executing for this we need a program counter what is the present state of a process in like is it is in a ready state running state waiting state terminated state what is the present state these are the uh, process state information, program counter information, CPU register, what are the CPU registers used by the processes, CPU scheduling information, what are the different type of CPU scheduling like preemptive scheduling, non preemptive scheduling, priority scheduling, there are a lot of number of scheduling based upon the uh, activities of a particular process, uh, we can choose the CPU scheduling in information and we will study in next classes what are the CPU scheduling activities memory management information accounting information input output status information so let's see here is a uh, diagram for this process control block in which we have process state process number program counter registers memory limits list of open files so and uh, one thing you need to remember that uh, we uh, uh, 
diagrams are essential in operating system because uh, you can write a lot of theoretical thing, but whenever you draw a diagram, it uh, make a uh, point without uh, making a lot of uh, textual information because in diagrams you can express your understanding of the topic very easily. So here you can see that all the information that you have previously can be designed into a process control block like in process state, process number, program counter, registers, memory limits, list of open files. These are the ingredients of a process control block. Suppose you got a question in the examination that define process. So whenever you are defining a process, you need to define the process control block also because process control block that is PCB is the soul of your process. Without explaining the process control block, you cannot explain the process. Understand? So uh, this is the process control block. <clears throat> Some exercises for you like define process explain various steps involved in change of a process state with neat transition diagram as you can see that that diagram is required here explain process control block draw process state transition diagram again in this way the question can be asked <coughs> describe the typical elements of the process control block differentiate between process and program i'm uh, revising again today's class of this process Let's discuss again, what is a process? What a process is a program in execution, program is a passive entity and process is an active entity. What are the resources required by the process are CPU, memory, input output files, initialization data. Uh, what are the essential ingredients of a process that is program counter, stack and data section. These are the essential things of a process must include. And what are the five states of a process? First one is new, then ready. A new process is admitted into the ready state, then that ready queue, from that ready queue, a scheduler dispatch can select which process can go into the running state based upon some scheduling criteria that we will discuss in further classes. And we can see that uh, a process can go back from running state to ready state. Then we have waiting state for all those processes which required input output or event wait. <coughs> Sorry. Once input output or event completion completed, then the process from waiting state can go to the ready state. Then our running program can be terminated once it is exited. What are the process? Uh, process. A process execute its it changes state. First one is new. The process is being created. Running instructions are being executed. Waiting. The process is waiting for some event to occur. Ready. The process is waiting to be assigned to a process. And the last terminated. The process has finished execution. Now process control block, process state, program counter, CPU registers. CPU scheduling information, memory management information, accounting information, input output, its status information. And here is a diagram of PCB that is process state, process number, program counter, registers, memory limits, list of open files. Now, some exercise. So today we are done. We have today uh, study that what are the system applications. And then we study that uh, pro introduction of a process management introduction of process management in which uh, we have seen that there are five states there are five states like new state running state new state ready state running state then waiting state and terminated state once a new process comes it in the ready a new state and then it is admitted to the ready state and there is in ready state we have a ready queue in which a number of processes are there and there is a scheduler dispatch which select from ready state which process next will go to execute in or use the services of the hardware based upon some scheduling algorithm what are the different scheduling algorithms like preemptive scheduling algorithm and non preemptive scheduling algorithm heap scheduling algorithm uh, uh, Sorry, it, it is not here, it is priority scheduling algorithm. Multiple scheduling algorithms are there. We will study in further classes. And then 
uh, we can we have studied that uh, there is a process control block in which process control block uh, we have all the essential things that are required by a process to uh, maintain the state of a process in where it is executing so in next class we will uh, study some more concept of a process management then we will have some numericals on scheduling algorithm till please study the book and study topic wise today we have discussed process management so open your book and things uh, akshay is asking some sir some of what is just not taking class as per the time table so sir it goes difficult to attend in a short period of notice please don't disclose my name but plenty of students have said this in group uh, actually, uh, okay i understand about your concern and that there, there is some um, issue regarding the time table of the uh, students uh, i recommend you to all of you students for this issue please uh, talk to in charge csc department he will take in care of these things again priyam is asking please explain sir is taken heap again sure beta i am i will explain uh, let me first solve the previous problem that uh, you are not having classes on time so i recommend you please talk to engineer chandwan sir he is the in charge of csc department uh, if your teachers are related to csc department then you can ask them if they are some uh, teachers from applied uh, uh, and humanity department then you can talk to dr anpam he is the in charge of applied science and humanities he will take care of your concern and i will uh, assure you that he will solve your problem as soon as you talk to them okay now priyam has asked that please explain sir stack and heap again okay beta uh, uh, stack and heap comes in the picture when you talk about the memory of a computer system uh, when you can whenever you ask about the context of a memory in a computer then we have a two broad concept of memory in computer that is first one is heap and second one is stack now heap you can think of a large amount of memory space a large space uh, of memory where you can store a lot of information that is a heap and what is a stack a stack is a very small uh, space in the memory that you can use for frequently use just you can think of now that is not exactly related have an analogy of heap and stack but you can understand about that hard disk like your hard disk of your computer system there is a lot of memory space is right there right you can store each and every information essential and non essential everything right but what about ram ram is having a very less space like suppose you are having a 2 gb ram but your hard disk is 1 tb now what we store in hard disk and what we stored in ram we store only running processes and uh, frequently use information in the ram R right so uh, be why we use ram for frequent faster speed for faster execution because that information is stored in the ram and in ram is very close to your hardware and you get the information very f frequently from the ram and what about hard disk it is stored uh, it is far from the hardware your cpu so it is a uh, having a lot of uh, space but the execution speed process uh, can go to read the hard disk and then comes to uh, through database to the, your cpu so the transition spe speed is very slow so for faster execution we store uh, frequently used information where in the ram and all other information in the hard disk this is not the right analogy but to take uh, your imagination to understand about the heap and stack i uh, put this analogy so now think again in your house also you are having a store room in your house where you put uh, uh, some in uh, stuff there which is not frequently used by you but you required those things at a pointer at a uh, down the line whenever you required suppose you are having three pair of shoes one is uh, for your uh, college one is for your party and one is for some like marriage function uh, special occasions now that uh, special occasion shoes you have put into your store room because you are not using that much frequently and the 
like your party wear shoes and your college shoes you have put in under your bed because you are using uh, very frequently so what here is think of your store room is just like a heap and uh, your study table where you put uh, uh, very frequently used books in your study table these are what this is the stack so a stack uh, when uh, you study about the data structure in previous uh, semester you must have heard about your dynamic memory allocation in dynamic memory allocation uh, we put the memory from the heap and for static memory allocation we have memory for the stack so if you have still some doubt you can uh, go and study about some uh, Uh, like dynamic memory allocation where you can see the concept of heap or still if you don't understand don't bother about this because uh, you will have a topic design and analysis of algorithm i guess uh, in um, next semester where you will study about heap once again and you will have a clear picture of stack and heap so uh, uh, in uh, operating system heap also we don't need some uh, information regarding heap we still you must aware about what are the memory concept of stack and heap how memory is stored in the computer system and how uh, your processes use memory and uh, of uh, stack and heap he stack is frequently used memory space used in static memory location stack and what about heap heap is used in dynamic memory allocation and having a huge uh, space or you can think of a, a in broad sense computer memory in two parts one is heap one is stack stack is used in static memory allocation and heap is used for dynamic memory allocation because uh, you can pick uh, that in a space from any point of time using dynamic memory allocation so we are done with today's class happy learning students we will uh, see you tomorrow uh, when we have class i uh, wednesday okay in next turn whatever we the next turn we will uh, discuss about some more concept of process management from today we will have some interesting session from now onwards because boring section has been completed that is the introduction of operating system so gear up buckle up and start learning operating system it is a very interesting subject and very scoring subject uh, i bet on you that you will get a maximum number of marks in operating system in this present semester because uh, it is very easy to understand topics everything is clear but you need a lot of imagination power to understand the concept of operating system because here it is everything is intangible you cannot touch and feel how things are working here you have to use your imagination power you have to relate those things from the real world only then you can have the concept of these things that we are using in the operating system akshay is asking thank you sir by when we will have our test exam uh, if you are asking about semester examination or uh, sessional examination that i am not aware of we can have class tests once we are done with the first unit we will have class tests i will inform you about the class tests we are, we will have class tests in the google classroom i will inform you each and every information for rest of the test and exam queries please uh, discuss this information to dr shashi bala ma'am she is in charge of examination cell okay beta keep learning bye bye thank you class thank you sir